So recording has started, yeah. So has recording also, uh, is it showing that recording has started? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so let us quickly recall what we did in previous lecture. So, uh, in previous lecture, we uh, defined a problem where we had a rigid body and um, the position of a point on a rigid body was given. Uh, uh, no. The position of a reference point on a rigid body was given. And the orientation of the rigid body that is theta with respect to the base frame was given. And the requirement was to find out the position and the velocity of any point P on the rigid body. Also the velocity of reference point and the angular velocity was given. So this was the problem we saw in the previous lecture. And uh, then we defined some frames like a uh, frame attached to the uh, attached to the body which we call as body frame uh, we denoted it with the dash uh, representation that is i dash and j dash and there was a base frame or the fixed or the inertial frame uh, which was denoted as i and j so then we also discussed the rotation matrix, which was nothing but uh, if you are given some position X naught, Y naught, and you are rotating, uh, you are now rotating your frame by theta, then the uh, then the uh, rotated vector is given by uh, this. Okay. So if you can see, this was a point which was attached to the, let's take this point. This was a point which was attached to this rectangular body. Okay, so this was fixed in the body frame. Now you are rotating this body frame with respect to the base frame. So now the, now the, a rotated vector in the base frame. OK, this is the rotated vector in the base frame is given by the original vector in the base frame times this rotation matrix. And we saw that this rotation matrix is nothing but the components of the I and J uh, vectors of uh, body frame in inertial frame. OK, and this was the important definition because we could extend the definition of the rotation maps directly to three dimensions. OK. And. Uh, uh, then we define diode. Uh, uh, we, just like we have vector in space, which is nothing but a directed line or a or a ray, uh, which is a geometrical object. So it has nothing to do with the numbers which uh, we discussed. Uh, in previous lecture, I hope you are you have understood that. OK, so similarly, uh, like uh, we have three set of numbers which is attached to that uh, vector. Like we represent that vector in different frames and we have three number set of three numbers. But uh, similarly, we have set of uh, nine numbers which we call as matrix. But we can attach a mathematical object. Which will have which will be represented by set of nine numbers in a particular frame. But uh, in general, it will have nothing to do with the. With uh, with the set of numbers that is this set of nine numbers, so this. Um, geometrical object which we don't know what is the shape some. Uh, people have given the interpretation in 2D uh, or the three or 3D, but uh, let us stick to the mathematical definition of this object uh, because when we will be dealing with higher dimensions, then it becomes 
troublesome. So basically you always have a habit of uh, uh, visualizing the things in 3D, but when you go to higher dimensions, there is no such visualization and then it pinches your uh, head. OK, so that is why we will stick to the mathematical definition of this object. So if we have vector A and B, which we know these are the directed lines, then stacking the, these two objects together such that when they operate on third vector, when we take the dot product uh, of this uh, object, mathematical object, which we call as diad, when we take the dot product with some vector C, it operates like this. So if we take a B uh, dot dotted with C, so it operates like this a dot. Sorry, so. Uh, so I think. Uh, something is missing here. OK, I think I have taken this. Uh, OK, so. If we have uh, this uh, stacking of two vectors A and B st stacking them. Side by side and when we take the dot product with some vector C. The dot pro product operates like this. We call this mathematical object as diode and see both of these are vectors which has nothing to do with the frames. Uh, therefore, this diode which. Uh, uh, yeah. Is a mathematical object. It also has a, it also has nothing to do with the the frames. The first kind of diode uh, which you saw was a rotation. Uh, was, was was a diode which was associated with the rotation, and we defined this diode as this i uh, prime i plus j prime j. But this i prime and j prime are the unit vectors of uh, new rotated frame. OK, and this I and J are the original frame. Then we saw that if we take the dot product of this I with this uh, diode, we get I dash. That is this magical uh, object which we call as. Uh, uh, which we call as a uh, rotation tensor or rotation rotational diode. Uh, if you take the dot product of I, it gives you the rotated I that is I dash. In general, if you dot any vector with this rotation, it will give you the rotated form of that vector. OK, so similarly R uh, dot J will give you J dot. Similarly, R dot R P O O naught, which is the original vector will give you the R P R P O uh, dash. OK. <clears throat> OK, uh, then we defined some outer product. Uh, uh, to OK, and. Uh, uh, how to operate and I hope you have done this because we uh, left this in between. Uh, this was your homework to prove that. Uh, That uh, what? So you did it? Yeah, I did uh, not completely, but I just uh, uh, what I can what I can say. Uh, well, uh, I I cannot find solution, sir. But I try it. Can't find this solution. Okay. I don't think it was. Uh, that much difficult, but OK, if you are not able to find it. Uh, it is OK, you can again try and if again you can find it, then you can contact me. I will Maybe try we will. Yeah. OK. Next class we will. So today let us start with the. So in continuation before we go to the. Main problem which we will be discussing today. Let us take. Uh, one step ahead and uh, so basically what we have derived let us see what we have got till now okay so this is what we have got uh till now um so you have uh, a point p 
So basically what we have got is like this. Uh, so you have this body. And there is some point P and this is reference point. And you know the position of this reference point. OK. You know. And you also know what is the velocity of this reference point. OK, you also know it's different velocity with respect to this base frame. So the problem was to find the velocity of this point P. See the velocity of point P with respect to O is nothing but velocity of this uh, O dash with respect to O plus R dot. Uh, cross R P O with respect to Oh, which which is uh, the original uh, or the initial uh, position of this P uh, with respect to O. OK, so if you are given this information, you can find the velocity of this point P. Now uh, let us go to velocity and see how we can find the velocity. OK, then we also saw that this R dot is nothing. But uh, uh, we got this expression for R dot in terms of component. If we talk about uh, components, then we got this for R dot and we re uh, we then wrote it like. This R dot equal to this this so R dot was zero minus omega omega R times. Uh, the rotation matrix. So R dot in general is nothing but omega skew-symmetric matrix associated with the omega times the rotation matrix. OK, so let's continue with this. So let me rewrite. The things. So we. Uh, o VP. With respect to O is nothing but. V O dash with respect to O plus uh, R dot cross and multiply by R P with respect to O, but at time zero. So this is our velocity. OK. So now let us. Uh, Go ahead and derive an expression for uh, for the acceleration. That is, if we have if we have this point C reference point, sorry O or dash, and uh, this is P. So if we are given the acceleration of this O dash, can we find the acceleration of P? OK, so this is uh, so given acceleration of O dash. Can we find and also angular acceleration that is theta double dot? If we are given these two things, can we find the acceleration of any point P? And can we? Yeah, so this is basically the next task is because these we will be uh, uh, we will be uh, using these equations most of the time in the coming exam yeah what is rigid body sir yeah yeah this is a rigid we are still with the the rigid body it's this is not sir. extendable yeah if we know the acceleration of the O dash particle yeah. and the angular velocity of this particle. Yeah, so we have to find the acceleration of any any um, this uh, any point P. OK. That is our goal. So we we know that uh, velocity of uh, P with respect to O dash. Can we write this as velocity of P? Minus velocity of O dash. This is from the def definition of the 
relative velocity, isn't it? <coughs> yes, sir. Yes. Okay, taking double derivative, taking derivative of this thing, we can write VP O dash is equal to VP dot minus V O dash. This is not, uh, yeah. Okay. So is this okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. V dot P minus V dot A. <clears throat> okay, so what is this? It is an acceleration. Have, yeah, so basically, uh, let me go and I, and I also told you that we can write this thing as V P with respect to O is equal to V O dash with respect to O plus Omega cross R P O. So I also mentioned this. This and this are same thing. Okay. We can take the cross product of this. Okay. So it becomes what R, is this? R, 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 yeah. So what is this V P O dash? V P O dash is nothing but V P minus uh v o v p o dash minus v o that minus is this v p minus v o so that is omega cross this so i can write it as omega cross r r p r dot p o dash r dot p o yeah r p with respect o i am omitting this because um that is something which we are uh, like I am omitting the O in all these cases because this is understood that is uh, with respect to the inertial frame itself. Okay, so dot of this. And this, this is nothing but uh, dot minus V naught. Okay. So okay, is sir. this clear? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what is this? Uh, uh, we can write the uh, product rule for this derivative. So we can write it as omega dot cross R P with respect to originally plus omega <coughs> cross r p o dot equal to v p minus v o is it clear or not i have taken the proof so this was the derivative of this thing and this is nothing but the derivative of first cross second plus yes derivative of uh, um, first cross derivative of second okay okay and this is omega dot plus r p what is this r p o dot sir v p sir yeah but what is that equal to can you uh, uh define the velocity uh in terms of something vp minus vo so r of p dash so how can you represent it sir vp sir vp minus vo VP minus VO. Yeah, but that we have already done that. I am not saying uh, uh, that. I am saying that this is nothing but uh, VP O dash itself. But how was VP O dash represented? Can you see from this? So VP uh, okay. VP v o dash. So this can be represented as omega cross RPO. 
yes sir yes sir vo dash to omega yeah. cross rpo dash so, so omega cross rp okay and this is equal to vp and so we got this vp dot which is the acceleration of p point is nothing but v naught dot that is the acceleration of the reference point plus omega cross omega cross rp point uh, plus omega dot cross rp so this is this is the thing which we were saying. So let us go back to this figure. So we were given the acceleration of this point. We need to find the acceleration of this. So this equation is saying that acceleration of this point is nothing but the acceleration of this point. Okay. Acceleration of uh, VP dot is nothing but the acceleration of uh, v, v O dash. This is V O dash. Huh? V O dash. Plus Omega, which is angular axle, angular velocity cross Omega cross R P. So if you see, this is something like Omega square R. Omega square Omega is the angular X uh, velocity of this thing square r r is nothing but this vector okay a relative vector of p with respect to o dash so this is something like a, a centripetal acceleration so this has an acceleration component in this direction okay this has acceleration in this direction and it has acceleration in this direction with i am saying with respect to o dash okay we have already considered the acceleration of O dash, but with respect to O dash, this P will have two components of acceleration. If this is a rigid, rigid body, one is that is the acceleration towards O dash, and the other is the tangential component which will, which will be perpendicular to this vector, and that is this uh, omega dot cross RP, which you can see as angular acceleration times uh, uh, radius which you in circular motion let me remind you uh, in terms of circular motion if we have some body or mass which is moving with some velocity so it is moving with velocity v <coughs> and it has a tangential acceleration of say a so then we define that it is a uh, centripetal acceleration of how much Omega R, square R. Yes, sir. Omega square R. V go. square upon R, R which is equal to omega square R square upon R, which is omega square R. Okay. So this is the and there is a tangential acceleration. What is that equal to? That is equal to. Yeah. Alpha R. Alpha R. So this is this is these are the two components. So basically, what you are doing. You are uh, saying that acceleration of P is nothing but the acceleration of O dash plus there are other two components. One is uh, relative to this O dash in the in this direction and the other one is perpendicular. So these are the two equations which I like was thinking you should know before we go to the uh, to, before we go to today's uh, this uh, talk. So in today's uh, lecture we will be discussing <coughs> What is known as uh, Chapley again sledge? Okay, Chapley again sledge. So it is basically it is basically a non polynomial. constraint. Problem. Okay.
It is a non holonomic constant problem. <coughs> <coughs> Just come in. <clears throat> so what do I mean by non holonomic constraint? So let me. Take this. Uh, example. Let us say this is hinge. And we are attaching a link. OK, we are attaching a link. Let us disconnect this. So basically initially how before joining these two, how it would have looked like it would have looked like. This this point will be some O dash point which is on link. And this is some O point which is attached to. Hinge. So is this a. Uh, clear O dash and O point because these will be very yeah, yes. important. So O is something which o is dash. attached to the uh, attached to the hinge and O dash is uh, another point which is attached to the link. So when we join these two uh, parts. Then there is a constraint on the motion of link. No link cannot move as uh, it wishes. Here it can move anywhere as it likes, but here it has a constraint. And what is the constraint? Constraint is that position of O is equal to position of O dash. Position of O dash. Is it clear for all times? Yes, there is. And when I am saying for all timers, uh, I hope uh, that uh, hinge is uh, enough strong uh, that it uh, bears the load of the uh, here, this uh, link. A link. Link. And link itself is uh, enough strong that it does not tear up while holding its own load. These are few assumptions which we uh, take. Okay, so the position, and by this, you can also there say that velocity of O is equal to velocity of O dash in o this dash. case is zero. Similarly, acceleration of O and acceleration of O dash for all times is equal to zero. Is it is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, so Constant. basically the co constraint on the velocity is directly reflected in constraint as the position. Similarly, you can have a constraint like this. Let us define. A path, a tube like this, and let us take this as X axis and this as Y axis. So there is a ball. Which exactly fits inside this. So this ball. Before this, this ball was free to move anywhere, but now this ball cannot move anywhere. Its position is restricted, or we can say its velocity. Velocity is always equal to what will be it equal to? Some. Uh, some y dot. J plus zero times X, zero times I. Are you getting? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes. It, it is it is in wider direction, so Y dot J plus. Yeah, so there will be there will there will be no uh, velocity in X direction. This is the constant. See, this kind of motion will be seen when you have a tube and uh, then you are a uh, you, you you are watching this uh, ball inside this tube. Before it it can, it could have moved anywhere. This direction, this uh, whatever direction it uh, would like, it could have moved in that direction. But once you put this to tube, it produces a constraint uh, on velocity, and which gets reflected in also in position. So if you integrate this velocity, 
you will get the position in y direction only. OK, so remember this word what I am using. If we integrate this velocity, you will get the position constant. OK, you will get the position only along. So if you integrate this, what you will get? You will get position. Y. R e as a R y. position position as a function of y only and that will be some position of time. Uh, function of time t. there will be no x okay so it reflects that this constraint on the velocity for this given example is also a constraint on the position okay and we can integrate this okay. velocity constant again can you repeat this sentence I'm saying that you have you you have a constraint on the velocity. You can only move in this direction. When you integrate this constraint, that is velocity constraint equation, you will get the position. But the position is also constraint. So you directly get uh, the position constraint from by integrating the velocity constraint equation. This type of uh, constraint constraint so this type of constraint which is imposed both on the velocity and uh, position and we when we integrate the position uh, sorry velocity constraint we get the position constraint this is known as the holonomic constraint problem holonomic constraint problem okay and there is another set of constraint problem so that is known as non holonomic so constant i think we have discussed constraint problem one constraint problem where we took that bead which was sliding down on uh, on a parabolic path somewhere you remember yeah, yes sir yes sir okay today let us discuss this non holonomic problem and see how interesting this is you will not find much of the um, examples for this non holonomic uh, case, but uh, it is very good. So let us see a video before we can jump into this problem. Uh, maybe it will be helpful for us. So I don't know where I have. I, I think I. Why has it OK? Uh, so let's take the YouTube and see. I hope we are not uh, being penalized for using YouTube. Uh, OK, let's see. So Chaplin's uh, card problem. No, but let us take just card. Card. Uh, okay. Why are not using the prime premium? Sir, I cannot see uh, someone is, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. OK, so. Uh, uh, 
so did you saw this video sir i saw but Hello? there was no sound sir sound no background sound was okay there. sound was not important acha okay sound was not important thing but uh, you saw the video so basically yes, it uh, it is the like uh, movement of the cart which we use uh, which we see in malls um are carrying our those loads and for carrying our items which we buy and also uh, at uh, airport you can see those carts which carry our bags extra so the wheels are very important how you design the wheels of the cart are very important so i hope you will get the insight what do i mean by that when we will solve this chaplikan uh, skate problem so let us continue so So this is a skate. Uh, uh, by skate, I mean that, uh, and this is the center of mass for, of this skate. So what do I mean by this? This C represents a wheel. So this wheel will uh, roll, and um, it cannot move in this direction. It cannot uh, have any velocity in this direction, but it can. rotate so you might also have seen any like wheel that cannot slide uh, sideways but it can move in this direction and uh, we assume that the rest of the pad which is sliding down the track on this 2d plane it has zero friction are you able to visualize this thing or not yes sir this is skate and below skate there, there is a roller sir wheel roller and it is not moving side uh, in side by side it is it is only a linear direction so in Kash in kashmiri we can say uh hagur hagur is put as used shatasa bitkana wheel and uh, on the back that uh, slide us but let us consider that thing that uh, uh, this thing like i think this is used in childhood by most of the i think in every country they should there is a wheel in front of this and there are two sticks which is uh, here we hold it and then we uh, <clears throat> write this thing but let's assume that this um, this whatever it is uh, called in your native uh, native region are wherever you are living but uh, let's assume that it is rolling on this wheel and the sliding part is totally frictionless maybe there is some cushionity or uh, uh, friction pad uh, so sorry uh, some material has been put uh, under this thing so that it has no friction so now only thing is that it can roll down and see it cannot move crosswise it has a very high friction so this is how i define this uh, chaplikan's leg uh, so it cannot slide this direction only it can move or roll in this direction and it has zero friction another example which is close to this uh, is uh, you have seen the skate uh, uh, when we do snow skating so on the on feet we wear those skates and slide down so you can see those uh, uh, those skates only move in forward direction they cannot slide crossways 
So this is the another example. Uh, see, and this is a point contact here. This is not something which is extended. For example, uh, you may think that it is like this much. OK, if it is like this much, then this. Then this uh, skate, since it has a in very high friction in this direction, so it will not allow this skate to rotate. For example, it will not allow it to rotate in this direction or in this direction. No, this is not the uh, this is not the case with this skate. This contact is only at a point. OK, this wheel has a contact only at a single point, so this skate can. Have angular uh, angular velocity in this direction. It can move. OK, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, it is good. I don't know whether I am speaking good and making you. Yes, understand sir, I, this I, thing or not. I, I, I understand, sir. This is actually a plan of the wheel. More precisely, yeah, yeah, like said, yeah, yeah. this is the plan of the wheel and the contact is only at one point. Contact so it doesn't point. restrict to the angular velocity. It restricts only the sideways motion. This is all what I am saying. OK, so now. Uh, let us see how we can uh, get the equations of the motion for this. Uh, for this. Problem. So let us take this. Uh, let us take this cat. And this is the center of mass. This is K and uh, let us take this direction and let us call this as lambda cap. And let us take this direction, which is perpendicular to this lambda, and call it as n, which is nothing but normal. And this uh, line makes theta angle. It makes theta angle with the x axis. This is I. And this is. G OK. <clears throat> Sir, what we are finding? Yeah, yeah, this is a good question. <laughs> we are trying to find out the equation of motion for this rigid body. By equation of motion, we mean. For example, we may be uh, concerned with what is the position of the center of mass, how this body moves with time. Given some initial velocity and initial condition, how this this will evolve with time. The position and the velocity will evolve with time. OK. Is it okay. clear or it doesn't make any sense? Are you your question was different? <laughs> Your question was different. Yes, sir, sir. I was saying that what actually we are at uh, and what we are finding about this scared body, rigid body, sir. acceleration or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I am trying to say is uh, that we have uh, we have this problem, and uh, the thing is that there is a constraint on this. Uh, uh, on this point, this point cannot move in this direction. At every time, this point has to move in this direction. OK. So if you give some, for example, initial angular velocity to this body and uh, say some velocity to this uh, C point, and you see in 3D how this body is moving. So that is our concern. We want to find the equation of the motion. Given any point on this body, what will be the position given initial conditions? This is the thing we, because it is a very important problem and uh, uh, this is a non holonomic problem. So you will get intuition how to solve the equation for the non holonomic problem. This is 
what we will be doing. So and one thing I will want to make clear is. Uh, 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 for example, if we have a body. Say um, this is a three dimensional, uh, sorry, two dimensional body. We are living in two dimensions. OK. And this is the body. So this body can move in this direction. It can move in this direction and also it can rotate. So how many degrees of freedom it has? So Same. it can move in X, Same. it can move in what? Y, it can move in Z. And its velocity can be along V. Uh, it can have Vx velocity, it can have Vy velocity, and it can have omega. So you see there are three degrees of freedom in position, and there are three degrees of freedom with in terms of velocity. OK. See okay. here. See here. When I am saying that this body cannot move, uh, cannot move in this direction, it doesn't, uh, cannot have velocity in this, in this direction. I am not saying it cannot move in this direction. I am saying it cannot have velocity in this direction. Say, for example, this body is at this point, it is here, and this wants to go here. Can this body move from this point to this point? Uh, are not. Uh, this is a question to you. Let let me draw another figure and uh, see if you can answer this. This C point is here. OK. And. Uh, this is central. I want this C point to reach here. Can you can it reach here? Uh, have you seen that my battery is running low? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your battery is running low. You are, might want to pull up in your EC, PC. So it means that oh, screen is uh, it is running. It is working good. Sir, point C will not. I think. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I am listening. So, uh, point C will not go at uh, let at that point be P, sir. But uh -huh. we can find a uh, velocity or acceleration at this new point by using the previous concept, sir. My only concern is that uh, uh, so my only concern is that uh, we have this uh, scat is the, at this point and it wants to go to this point. Will it can it go or not? It will go. It will go if you change the direction. Yeah, so the oh, only thing uh, you have to do is. Uh, we, we have to rotate, change the direction clockwise. Rotate yeah. this, rotate, rotate this like leg this. like this so yes, that uh, then it, will it is like this. Yeah, yeah, yes. And yes, then and this C point will change its position like this and then yes. move it like this. OK. Yeah, yeah. Is this clear? Ah, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. So, what do I mean by this? Is that this, this should not deceive you? So, I am saying that it cannot have velocity in this direction means that the point or the time at which this C is like this. It cannot have velocity in this direction, but it doesn't mean that the C point cannot move in this direction. It can rotate this and move. Um, this is a very important. Uh, uh, what we can say this is a very important point to understand the holo non-holonomic constraint. 
See, there is a constant in this direction that is it cannot have lost in this direction, but it can achieve the position in this direction. If there is any uh, po position in this direction and you want to go there, you can go there. Your only thing is that you have to change the di uh, direction and you can see the previous example where there was a constraint. You could not have gone there if there was a velocity constant in, in this direction. You, you cannot achieve the position in that direction. Uh, say for example, ima imagine in your mind that there is a tube. Okay, there is a tube. So now you can move only in this direction. Will will you ever be able to reach this point? No, 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 sir. No, because yeah. this constraint is not only on constraint on the uh, velocity, but also on the position. But this kind of constraint, this is not on the uh, position. So you can, this is only on the velocity. If there is velocity in this direction, there cannot be velocity in this direction. Okay. So that is what I was saying that this kind of constraint, you, you can't integrate to get the position. Okay. So how can we. Uh, you said that. Uh, this kind of constraint, we plus. can't integrate to get the constraint on the position. 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 Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Why? Why, sir? So, this is the nature of the non-holonomic. That is what I was trying to understand you. This is the nature of the non-holonomic uh, constraint. See, can there I? is a velocity constraint in this direction, which says that you cannot have velocity in this direction. If you integrate that, that will mean that you cannot have position in this direction, but we have position in this direction. We can achieve the position. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, so uh, let us see how many degrees of freedom this uh, have. In terms of position, this skate can uh, consume uh, or we can say it can occupy any position. So it can reach any X, it can reach any Y, and it can achieve any theta. There is no uh, constraint on the, this thing. Whatever position, angular position you want for this body, whatever position you want, this center of mass or C should go, it, it can go. So there is freedom. Any wire in 2D, it can reach any point. Is it true? Yes, sir. X and Y. Sir, how theta? Okay. So, okay. Let me explain this also. So, what it I mean. Hey, right, but how it moves in theta, sir? Yeah, yeah. I got it. So, let us take this. Uh, say, for example, initially, this is the skate's position. This is the center. So you want your skate to any point, say this X comma Y point, OK? So you rotate this and go this and you will reach here. OK, so now you are at this, your center of mass is at this position X comma Y. OK, is this clear? Yes, sir, yes, sir, that is clear. So basically your skate has moved like this. Huh? Say for example. OK. Now at this okay. X and Y, you want this skate have some given theta with respect to X axis. So rotate it. Rotate it when it reaches X comma Y. Rotate it till you till it attains some desired theta. There is no foundation on uh, uh, theta. Yeah, because because it can move, uh, it can rotate about that C point. I, is it clear? Yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So it can move about that uh, uh, C point. So before uh, you can move it, uh, you can rotate it about C point to get uh, desired theta, and then you can move to this X and Y position. Okay, that is why I am saying that. It has freedom. It has freedom to go to any X and Y, the center of mass, or any other point can move to any point you want on this 2D plane. And you, it can assume any uh, angular uh, uh, angular configuration with respect to this uh, 2D. 
uh, uh, 2D player. OK. Now, what about the velocity? So C cannot have velocity. C cannot have velocity component along N. So C can have only velocity. Oh, what has happened? So C can have velocity only along lambda. What was lambda? So this was lambda. And this was N. There cannot be any velocity in this direction. There can only be velocity in this direction. You can also put minus here. So no velocity in this direction. OK. So what I was saying, so yeah, minus, why minus, yeah, what? Why minus, 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 minus? It is not important if you consider VC as the magnitude of velocity, so VC will always be positive, okay. And uh, I am taking velocity of this point in this direction, but lambda is in this direction, so the velocity of this point is in negative direction of lambda. See, lambda, I am. Lambda I have defined a vector, a unit vector from C to G. Where the velocity of C is in this direction. Therefore, I am writing it as minus times some magnitude of velocity times this lambda. OK. OK. Uh, or not clear. Uh, is it clear or not? OK, OK, sir. OK. So is opposite to the lambda. Where? Point C is moving opposite to the lambda cap. Lambda. If it is moving opposite to the lambda, then this is minus VC. If it is moving in in direction of lambda, lambda, then it is VC times lambda. OK, we will rewrite this equation in more uh, good form where we don't need this thing. So uh, and it can have any angular velocity. There is no constraint on the angular velocity. So there is there it can assume any angular velocity. So how many freedom of uh, velocity it have? It have two degrees of uh, freedom oh. for velocity. It can have velocity along uh, lambda and it can have any angular velocity. So two degrees of freedom. For velocity and three degrees of freedom for position. OK, three degrees of our position. So see, there is a difference in the degrees of freedom of position uh, with respect to the degrees of freedom of velocity. It is obvious that if you integrate this thing, you will learn you. You will be imposing uh, uh, constant on position. So if you integrate a velocity which has two degrees of freedom, you will get uh, uh, we will get position which has two degrees of freedom, but which is not true. This this body has three degrees of uh, freedom in in terms of position. So this is why I was saying that. Uh, uh, this constraint is not integrable. You cannot integrate this constraint to get the constraint on position. OK, so how sir, can we write? Sir, yeah. sir, can we uh, take a component? Cannot we take a component of V along X and Y direction? Yeah, we and can take. So so yeah. when it when when we can take the component of V along X and Y direction, thus it has a it has two components along X and along Y. So when we integrate yeah. this, so we get X uh, uh, X position and Y position, thus it has three uh, three degree of freedom. Nice question. Let me explain. OK, let me explain. So. A boy is moving. On a straight line. What kind of motion this is? Linear motion. Yeah, is it one dimensional, two dimensional? What kind of one, one day, one day? OK. So you are saying. This is one dimensional motion, OK, because you can take I or X axis and you can represent this uh, position of boy 
just as some x of t. OK, this is the position of boy. But someone comes and tells you that this boy is moving on a straight line. OK, but I, I am taking x axis in this direction. And y axis in this direction. So at every point, this boy will have two components, one along x axis and y, one along y axis. Will it have? Yes, sir, why position not? Of position will be some x i plus y j. So yes, is sir. this a two dimensional motion or one dimensional? Two dimensional. So how can you solve this riddle or the problem? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the pair. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't. See, the nature of the pro This is why I am saying uh, you should understand the vectors. Vectors are not just someone is looking from a different window. It will not change the person which is inside the room. OK? OK, sir. Someone is uh, seeing me from door. And someone is seeing me from the window. I am same person. Maybe different. Uh, they are looking me uh, different. They are looking my different parts from different positions. But I myself will remain constant and invariant uh, with respect to those like they are seeing. That doesn't change me, my uh, structure or anything else because I am a geometrical body. Similarly, you should also remember that the nature of the problem doesn't change when you change the frame. If it is a one dimensional problem, it will remain one dimensional. It cannot become two dimensional just because you are seeing from different perspective. But you have to see how this is a one dimensional problem. See, in this second problem, uh, if you go to this second problem, this X and Y are not independent. OK, this X is not changing independently. This Y is not changing independently. There is a relation between this X and Y. And you can see that that relation is some Y is equal to M times X. And the second thing is that when I am saying, well, is this a one dimensional or two dimensional? It means that how many uh, at max, how many dimensions you require to represent that motion? At max, we need only one axis to represent this motion. So we call this motion as linear motion or the rectilinear motion or the one dimensional motion. Similarly, here, when you are saying that uh, I will, uh, okay, so I was saying that this is that skate C point. And uh, it has a velocity in this direction, which is lambda direction. So I can represent the velocity of C just some uh, constant time as lambda. And so it has no uh, velocity in this n direction. And now you are saying I will resolve this lambda in uh, X and Y component. So basically this C velocity, VC velocity will be VC, uh, VC I X plus VC by J. That is this VC will have two velocity components, one along X axis and one, one along Y axis. But these VC X and VC Y, these will not be independent. By this I mean you cannot vary V, you cannot have some VC Y value and you can choose independently VC X value. No. Once you take some VC Y value, VC X value get will get fixed on the basis of this constraint. So basically these are just one degree. But when I am saying degree of freedom, so there should be freedom in choosing one value or the other value. With rest, there should be no dependence. See the uh, degrees of freedom in the position. I was saying that it can move to X, any X. Then it can move to any Y. This is how I de define uh, the degree of freedom in uh, position. If it were like uh, I am moving to any X and uh, uh, the Y is getting fixed, then it doesn't mean it has two degrees of freedom. Although it is attaining different values of Y, but those Y are actually determined by the values of X. So you are not uh, having freedom of changing X and Y value independently. In that case, we can say that the position has not two degrees of freedom, but has just one degree of freedom. Similarly, here the Vx and Vy, 
these are not independent. You cannot choose them independently. Uh, you have only one degree of freedom in terms of velocity, yeah, like in this VC and VY. And you have angular uh, velocity freedom. Is it clear or not? It's clear, but sir, can you little bit now define a 2D motion, sir, so that I can uh, get uh, clear. Okay, I, I told you that. Um, 2D motion, okay, why is this? So 2D motion, we can define it. We can define 2D motion as uh, motion. Where. We require at least two axes to represent the motion. Clear? Yes, sir. Any issue? Any doubt which is coming to your mind? We'll get at least two axes to color the motion. You can that is the motion which cannot be represented by single axis. You can represent this motion by three axes, but you cannot represent this motion by one axis. Yes, that sir. is why I'm writing motion which requires at least two axes. OK. OK, for example, say this circular motion. Can you represent this by a single axis? And no. I am seeing the rectilinear. Uh, uh, sorry, this Cartesian axis that is the straight axis. Maybe you can uh, say, yeah, I can represent this by a single axis. And what is that axis? That is something which is uh, 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 the circumference of this uh, circle. That is not a rectilinear axis. OK, so are the orthonormal. Axis. I am talking about those things. So in 2D, can I say that uh, the two axes are independent of each other? A body can move in one axis. Yeah, they are the fixed. Yeah. Uh, the yes. body can move in one direction. Let it be X mm -hmm. direction and the Y direction. Uh, the component of this body along Y will be fixed. And if it is moving in y direction, x can fix it. But in one dd, in one d, the yes. uh, uh, the the position along x, if it changes, it will definitely change uh, accordingly in, the, in y direction. Yeah, it will change in y direction. No, but see, one in one uh, one uh, dimensional problem, you just need a single axis to represent the motion. If you are uh, like uh, representing it in two axes, you are just uh, wasting one axis. You could have represented the motion in just uh, single axis, but uh, you are uselessly using the more axis to represent this motion. OK, OK, sir. Got it. OK, so let us continue uh, with this problem and uh, see how can we write this constraint here, OK? Uh, so this is our skate or the Champlain skate, whatever you call this. And this is the center of mass. G, this is the C. And uh, this is velocity of C. And this is normal vector which we are defined. So we can write our constraint like this constraint. We can write it as. VC. That is the velocity of this point C dot. N equal to zero. Can we write this like this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, 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 sir. We dot dot protect. Just a minute.
OK. So I was saying that, uh, OK, so we are given this. Uh, we are given this uh, constraint. So you can say that we want um, the position constant, so we will just integrate this thing. We will just integrate this constraint and get the. And get the uh, position, but you you can't do this because this is a. Uh, this is a non holonomic constraint, OK. You can't do this. And uh, one thing I just missed that I didn't wear earphone. I think uh, the quality of this would have decreased. Due to that, no, no, that's quality. Have... is my audio clear? It's, it's clear, crystal clear. OK, then it is fine. OK, so we we, we can't do this. Uh, so how will we solve? So let us go and see. So first thing is. We will write linear. Momentum. Balance equation. So what uh, linear momentum balance equation says? Summation of all external forces is nothing no, but. Is L dot. L dot. OK. Sir. OK, so we don't. Uh, OK, so then uh, since there is no uh, no velocity in this direction, obviously then there is some constraint force being applied by this constraint in this normal direction. Let's take that normal force uh, as N. So basically we have and this is the only force which is uh, acting on this. OK, so we can call this as. N. Only external force and this is equal to L dot and what is L dot? What is L? It is the linear moment for this. Uh, for this body and we know the linear momentum is nothing but mass times. And this is a rigid body, so we can write it the uh, uh, mass times the oh, velocity of the center of mass. OK, and we can write this here RG double dot. OK. OK. So <laughs> this is the first equation. And this is a vector equation. And uh, we call this as first. And what is this N, which is the constant force? Oh, this is some magnitude of N. And its direction is along normal. Is it clear? Yes, sir, clear. So we can write this. Uh, there were two unit vectors. One is this lambda hat and there was normal vector n and this body is making this lambda is making angle theta with x axis so we can write this lambda as cos of theta i plus sine of theta j and we can write the normal uh, to this we can write this normal vector as minus sine of theta i plus cos of theta j. Uh, you will tell, you will ask me how, how you know that. Uh, you can ask me that how you know that this is this. And there are two ways you can get this. By this cross product, sir. Yeah, you can find this by cross product. Or you can do it by dot product. So you know basically, if this is lambda, then the normal to lambda will be something. When we take dot product of these two, it should get uh, get us zero. to zero. And also, since n is a unit vector, uh, the <clears throat> the norm of that will be one. So basically, if you have this lambda, you define you don't have n. So you can take this n as, for example, nx 
i plus n y j and then you can do one thing you can take lambda dot n equal to zero this will be one equation and second equation is n square plus n y square is equal to one so you solve these two equations you will get these two unknowns which is nx and ny you will find that this nx is minus sign at theta and ny is cos of theta okay clear this okay, how this is how n x square was uh, uh, n y square is equal to one. This this is a unit vector. This n cap is a unit vector. So the magnitude should be one. Yes, sir. OK. So next we will do. So we got this first equation. Uh, e. <clears throat> OK, so what is the problem with this equation? Can you find out? We have this n equal to mrg double dot and n is some. Magnitude of this constant force times n. So what is the problem with this equation? Why should we get other equations also? So we have three unknown, sir. Which? Which are the unknowns? Uh, first one is sir, n. Yeah. Mod of n, then sir, it is uh, rg. Rg, yeah. And the n cap. N cap is not unknown. It is known. See from this. That's why sorry, it is unknown, sir. L m r g. One is N. And these are not one, these are two. Oh, oh sorry, V and this, sir. Huh? So this sir. is basically XG and YG. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Just uh, wait a minute. I don't know. Are you getting on this or should I clear? No. OK, so. So basically these are two unknowns and one is N, so we have three unknowns here and just we have one equation, so this is not sufficient to solve these three as for these three unknowns, so we need two more equations for that. What should we do? How we got this one from first equation? By using sir uh, L L M B. Why? What sir? What? How we got this equation? Uh, sir, sir, as summation of actual force is equal to change of change yeah, of by using the linear momentum balance equation. Does we uh, do we have any other equation we can use? We have this, I think, angular momentum balance equations. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we should use this. And okay, uh, sure. see, we have been doing this for so long time. Angular momentum about some G about G point is uh, the rate of change of the angular momentum. This is the talk. Huh? Talk about the angular uh, talk about the center of mass is uh, rate of change of angular momentum of center of mass. OK. Uh, is this uh, clear? Are you audible? Uh, am I audible? Sorry. Audible. Yes, sir. So is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, it is clear. You are not replying. That is why I am concerned. Mic was Mute. You muted the mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so this is N, which is the constant force. This is the G. 
which is the center of mass. This is the lambda. This is N. Uh, so what is the external talk about this G? The external talk will be only about uh, uh, the external talk about this G will be due to some external force which is acting on yeah. this body. And what is the external yes. force which is acting on this body? Is M R double dot G. M R, R No, R no, no. M R double dot G is not a force. Why are you using M R? Who told you that M R double dot is a L, force? Sorry, sir, L dot, L dot, sorry, L dot. L dot is not a force. Try to understand. These are C. L dot, R double dot, these are something which are kinematic in nature. And we are equating these things with some force. These are not force. You should never tell that R double dot is force, L dot is a uh, talk. These are not talks. Talks are something different and we are equating them to these things to get those things. So here the talk is due to this external force and external force here is only N. And this N force is acting at this point C. And due to this force, it is creating a talk about this point G. And let's take yes, that yes, the yes. distance between this C and G is D. Let's yes. call this distance as D. OK, so uh, what is this talk? This is nothing but uh, force. N dot D. Sorry, R cross D. OK, so what is the position of uh, this C? So we, we, we will write position of C. With cross respect N. to G cross N. This will be the talk external of this talk. N external force with respect to the G. OK, so this is this. Is equal to uh, what is this H? With respect to G dot. The angular momentum. Yeah, so wh what is it equal to? We know this is angular momentum, but what is it equal to? Yeah, tell. I omega, sir. Yeah. I omega. We, we, we have we derived these things or not? No, sir. No, never. We, we, we have never calculated this. Uh... We have calculated I, I, G, but I, here in this problem, we do not have I and I. Have we ever calculated this H dot with respect to G? I think we have and we Calculated yes. it and this was nothing but I, I G theta double dot. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes. Was this? Something was already pull, sir. Pull us, pull us. Yeah, that I here was that thing was about G, but about since we are calculating, uh, uh, so the first term was something like. Uh, this uh, uh, acceleration of uh, acceleration of G with respect to C. OK, but in here it is acceleration of G with respect to G because C, here are we take we are taking the reference point as C. Uh, sorry, G itself. OK, this C was yes. a reference point about which we were calculating talk and uh, but here the reference point is G. So it is acceleration of G with respect to G and this is equal to zero. So that first term just vanishes. So the second okay. term remains. Yes, yes. So this is I uh, omega dot, yes sir. Yeah. Hg is I omega and Hg dot is I omega dot. Yeah, so I can write this as I G, which is the moment of inertia about a uh, moment of inertia of this uh, sleg, uh, Kaplan's leg about point G, 
and theta dot or oh, theta dot triple dot. It is not triple dot. It is theta double dot. Yes, double dot. Yeah. And uh, what is the direction? Uh, it is k. So because this is a planar motion, angular acceleration and angular velocity uh, can be only in k direction. OK. Yes, sir. Yes. Clear. Yeah, yeah, sir. Clear. Don't worry. Sir, how much time it will take uh, on order, sir? I think we should finish it by 10.45 to 10.50, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Will that be okay? Yeah, yeah, sir, sir, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, now this is a vector equation. We can take the dot product of this equation, okay? We can take the dot product of this equation with respect to Key. Take dot product of this equation with K. So what we will get? We will get R C G. And also let us do one thing. Uh, or can we do it in next? Okay, let's do it in next. So R C with respect to G cross N dotted with K is equal to I G theta double dot K dot K K is one. OK, so what is this R C G? This is nothing but D times lambda. Uh, no, 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 it is not D times lambda. It is minus D times lambda. Because what is RCG? RCG is this vector, a vector from G to C. That is a magnitude of D, but that is the direction opposite to lambda. Is it clear? Position of this C with respect to G. It is a vector from G, G to C. From G to C. Okay, G and to C, the, yes. the the magnitude of that direction is from D, and direction is minus D lambda. lambda. So it is minus D lambda okay. cross yes. cross. N. N is nothing magnitude of N times N cap. N cap. Dotted with K is equal to IG theta double dot. Okay. So minus D. Uh, what is this lambda D N? What is this lambda cross N? So K. Can you tell me what is huh? K, K. 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 Yeah. K. Yeah. So lambda cross N is nothing but K. So this is K. And it is a one K, with dot K. K. It is one. So this is minus D N equal to I G theta double dot. Call this equation. Two. Okay. Yes, sir. So equation. It now. also says that our equations are consistent because we are getting scalars on both sides. <laughs> if it were like we are getting vector on one side and scalar on a, a, another side, then, then we were making some mistake. Okay. So now, but we have only two equations. We have got two equations. One is this. And the other one is this. OK. Yes, sir. First, and this is second equation, but we have how many variables we have? Three. We have still uh, three variables. OK. Variable left. Yes. Uh, three or four variables. I think we should have four variables. Three. Sir. OK, let's let's go and see. So we need more equations. OK. I think I theta double dot is also a variable. That is why I'm saying. OK, yes. <laughs> OK, let's uh, continue and see what will happen. So uh, uh, we need more equations, OK? Yes, At least we, we need two equations more. Yes. So uh, how, how we will get those equations? We will use 
constant equation constant what is constant constant is this isn't it bc dot n that is velocity of c cannot be in the direction of n and this is it can only be perpendicular to n there cannot be any component in the direction of n this is the constant our non holonomic constraint okay non holonomic constraint yes sir take the derivative of this thing so taking derivative of this vc dot n is equal to 0 so this is nothing but vc dotted with n uh, n cap dot plus uh okay let me do one thing so uh, this is first vc dot dot n cap plus vc dot n cap equal to 0 is it clear yeah 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 sir it is clear okay. so what is vc vc is nothing but velocity of g plus omega cross um, um, omega square c g this is the we, we we have derived this that if uh, two point c and g belong to the same rigid body then we can represent the velocity of c as velocity of g plus omega cross uh, relative position of c with respect to g okay this is for rigid body and uh, we can write this as vg plus we can write this theta as theta dot in the direction of k cross we can write this as rcg is nothing but minus d times lambda okay is it clear i hope yes. everything is clear uh, wherever it need some clarification i give or you may also ask ask me to give so this is minus theta dot d times n okay so this is vc and uh, we can further write it as vg minus theta dot d n n can we write it as sin theta i plus cos theta j okay yes is it okay yes sir yes. so uh, we can write vc theta dot vc now uh so basically i am rewriting this thing so vc uh, vc dot dot n plus vc plus n so vc i have written like this and vc dot <coughs> i will write as vc dot i can write it as a v g dot minus uh how can i write it so minus uh, d theta dot let, let me write and uh, then i will uh, ask you uh, uh, for like a clarification or something else minus theta dot d okay uh uh just wait a minute I have written something, but I don't know what I have written. Sir, here we we apply we 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 have to apply U U rule, sir. Theta and sine yeah. theta. No, no, no. I just want to use that equation which we have. Uh, let let me rub it and do it. I have not done it here, but let me do it for you. Maybe it will otherwise create some confusion. Uh. Okay, so uh, we have to find V C dot. That is the acceleration of point C. We have just derived it. It is V G dot. Okay, uh, and then there was 
Uh, in previous lecture, we are derived it. Let's see, I will tell you where we derive it. So. This is the thing which we derived. So let me copy this thing. Uh, So <clears throat> so using this thing, that is if we have a point P and O dash on some rigid body, we can write the uh, acceleration of P as this. So similarly, we can write this velocity of C as velocity of G, uh, sorry, acceleration of G plus omega cross omega <coughs> cross rp of uh, r uh, sorry here it is c so we can write it as rc with respect <coughs> with respect to g plus omega dot uh, cross uh, rc with respect to g okay so I will wrap this now because we don't require this <coughs> further. So let me wrap this. OK. <coughs> so we have. This equal to VG dot <coughs> plus what is this? This is theta dot K. Cross this is also theta dot K. Cross <coughs> what what is this? Minus T lambda. Plus <coughs> omega dot. This is theta double dot actually in the direction of K and this is. <coughs> This is uh, minus d lambda. OK. So <clears throat> this is equal to Vg dot. Vg dot. <clears throat> when you uh, see, you can take this dot. You can take the cross product of k and lambda and then take the cross product with k and similarly you take this cross product when you do all these things you will get minus uh, t uh, i am writing this directly huh? so i hope this is not will not be difficult for you because we are lacking time and i have to complete this today uh, <coughs> d cos of theta i uh, plus minus t theta double dot cos of theta plus theta dot square sine of theta j okay so this is our v c dot okay <clears throat> so we had derived a equation what was our equation? Our equation is this. And here VC dot. Uh, if we know VC dot, we, we know VC. See VC is this. And why I have changed it? It is because I want only VG. 
which can uh, which uh, uh, sorry i want only uh, these variables i want xg yg are in combination these can be written as rg i i need only this and uh, i want theta or theta double dot and i want n i don't want any any more variables here because we have limited equation so i tried to write this equation in terms of these variables see here i am writing it as vg minus theta dot d minus i theta cos theta okay and similarly i am writing vc dot vc dot as this where this is vg dot and this vg dot is nothing but it is x double dot and y double dot which we know these are the variables we are looking for okay uh, we are looking for x g and y g double dot and there is theta double dot okay so substituting this and this in this equation and also remembering that we have n which is nothing but uh, minus sine of theta i plus cos of theta j. I know this is not the nicer way of doing this. Uh, these things. Uh, so we uh, there we, we can use MATLAB for this, but uh, since this is the first time you are doing it, so I want everything to do on pen and paper. Uh, theta dot cos theta i minus theta dot sin theta j okay so this is n you take it as derivative it is derivative is nothing sine of theta it will become cos of theta and theta dot i is fixed so it is derivative is zero so we have i and similarly cos of theta is minus sine theta theta dot and this is j so you put these three equations in this equation in this uh where is this equation Uh, in this in this equation, so you will get what you will get is something like this, which I will write here. So uh, so you will get equation like this. So you will get uh, minus x g double dot sine of theta plus y g double dot cos of theta minus d theta double dot is equal to theta dot x g dot cos of theta plus theta dot y g dot sine of theta so this is our fourth equation so now let us see how many equations we have and what are the variables so this is our first equation uh, this is our second equation so what is the variable here here it uh, is theta. n comma theta double dot and let us go to first equation what is our first equation our first equation is this. So this first equation yes, you can yeah. rewrite. You can rewrite it as. Uh, uh, you can take dot product with uh, X and you can take dot product with Y. You can get X G double dot and Y G double dot something like something like that. OK, so you basically you can get N dot I equal to M X G double dot. And you will get n dot j equal to m y g double dot. So basically, these are two scalar equations. And how many variables? Two. So two from here. No, three variables. N, x g, and y g. So three variables from here, and one variable is theta double dot. So we have four variables. And how, how many equations we have? So we have one, two, three, four. We have three. And we have this equation, which is fourth equation. 
So you will rewrite these equations as, as we are doing pre in previous as we have done in previous uh, 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 previous lectures. So our variables are x g double dot and y, y g double dot and we have theta double dot and we have n. So you rewrite these four, you rewrite these four equations uh, like this: something times x g double dot plus something times y g double dot plus something times theta double dot plus n times equal to zero. You write every equation like this. When you will write these four equations like this, then we can write them in matrix form. And when we write this, those in matrix form, you will get, and this is your home problem, like please go and uh, see if this is correct or not. Just to, I have written everything, you have to rewrite these things in a nicer form so that you can write th these equations in matrix form. So when you will write these in matrix form, you will get something like this, M00 sine of theta, 0 M0 minus cos of theta, and 0, 0, I, G, D, and uh, minus sine of theta, cos of theta, and minus D, and 0. And this will be X, G, double dot, Y, G, double dot. This will be theta, double dot, and this will be N. And this is equal to 0, 0, 0, uh, theta dot xg dot cos of theta plus theta dot yg dot sine of theta. Okay, sir. So I have to yeah. write uh, these. Sir, I have to write these four uh, equations in terms of x, y, theta, and n. Then write in in matrix form. Yeah. See. See this equation. What is here uh, with xg? It is minus sine of theta, isn't it? So see minus sine of theta xg. What is with yg? Cos of theta. So cos of theta with yg double dot. What is with theta double dot? Minus d. See here it is minus d. What is with n? Nothing. So here it is zero times n equal to what is on the right hand side? Theta double dot xg dot cos of theta. Theta double dot xg cos of theta. Similarly, theta dot yg sin of theta. So this this last is representing this fourth equation. Similarly, if you multiply this row with this column, you will get third equation. If you write this and this, you will get second equation. If you write this and this, you will get first equation. Okay, uh, this is what I am saying. So this is fourth one. Um, this is your uh, third one. I will recall this. Uh, rewrite this as third one. This is not fourth one. Uh, third, uh, third, uh, second one, this is third because second one is this. See, this is first and this is this is second. OK, so you have to take N dot with I. OK, uh, where N is nothing but this capital N times uh, this uh, N and you know what this N is. N is this. So you have to take the dot of N with I. So just take dot of this with i, you will get first equation. Similarly, take dot of n with j, you will get second equation. Okay, so you get all the four equations, rewrite those equations and write those in the matrix form, and uh, you are done with this. So from this, you know everything. You have this A matrix, you have this B matrix, and you have this Z dot. We call this as Z dot matrix. So Z dot is nothing but uh, A modulo B. This is a MATLAB function which you can use. So you will get this Z dot. And um, when you are when you know Z dot, you just have to integrate it to get Z. But you have to give the initial conditions, initial conditions. So by initial conditions, I mean you have to you have initially you have to initially know what is this x g y g and theta dot and y g dot and x g dot. Initially, you should know what is the velocity of your center of mass and what is the angular x angular velocity with you which you are starting with. If you give these things, then um, for all the timers, this matrix will give you the position in the future time. So this was our.
I know this was a little bit uh, uh, like uh, hectic for you, oh, but uh, mm, there, I think you have learned a uh, new thing and I hope this is not something trivial. Uh, uh, solving a non holonomic problem and uh, I think this is the best way you can solve a non holonomic problem. If you do it in the MATLAB, uh, if I get the time that I will show you how we can solve this in MATLAB, you don't have to do this much calculation and you know you can make a lot of mistakes uh, because you don't keep track of these um, amount of variables in your mind. Sometimes you get uh, some error or you miss something. So there is a nice and better way to do this in the MATLAB simulic. Uh, sorry, symbolic. We use a symbolic uh, of MATLAB to do this. But I can show you if you have one or two minutes, I can show you the simulation and then we can. Uh, we are already done with this class. If you have time or otherwise, we can just uh, close for today. So it is up to you whether I should say whether I will show you simulation or not. It is only up to you. What do you want? How much time? How much time? Two minutes, maybe. Okay, two sir. minutes, I think. So, so uh, this is same problem. OK, yeah, you have done yeah. Already. yeah, it is done, done already in MATLAB. Yeah, yeah, I have already done it. In MATLAB, so just uh, I need to uh, make it in a way that you understand. OK, so basically you, you can see that same thing. So I'm defining the mass of it. I am defining the initial conditions for where is the initially where is the center of mass and what is the theta like what is the initial theta of the body how it is inclined and what is the initial angular uh, velocity these I am uh, uh, defining and uh, I am storing these uh, in this uh, Z naught and then I am using uh, uh, OD45 to solo it and also the dynamics part. This is the function for dynamics part which uh, I am using and this is this A matrix which I was saying and this is B matrix and this is Z dot and I am integrating this Z dot to get uh, my XG and YG in the future time. OK, so let's run uh, this and I, let's see how this moves. So see this is this uh, this red is the uh, is the center of mass. And this black is the so, that C point. OK, so this is how it moves. OK. There are uh, very good results, but since we don't have time, OK, if we get some time um, in future, maybe uh, I don't know, but if we get time so we can discuss the results. Otherwise, you can also simulate this thing and see by yourself how velocity is and other things change. One thing I can uh, say. <coughs> that uh, you see that the angular velocity tends to zero. This is the best result of this uh, Chaplin leg. No matter what kind of uh, initial angular velocity you give it, its uh, uh, angular speed will go to zero. So it will pick up the linear velocity. Linear velocity will increase and that will also saturate and its angular velocity will go on decreasing. OK, this is a future. We can also discuss uh, uh, Chaplin with the friction, but uh, maybe in some other time. So uh, this is all for today. Maybe in uh, next class we will start 3D uh, and maybe it will take uh, two classes more and then we will be done with this course. Uh, or do you have any question or shall we stop? V is equal to omega R. Yeah. The previous question. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So let me answer that question to you. Okay, so. So I was saying uh, uh, that uh, the question was that uh, uh, if we have a rigid body, okay, we have a rigid body and uh, uh, this is uh, some P point and this is some. Uh, so uh, so this is some J point and no, no, no. Let's call this as some P point and this as some Q point. 
So velocity of P with respect to Q is nothing but uh, omega associated with this. Uh, omega associated with this cross uh, position of P with respect to Q. OK, so this is what we know about rigid body. But in your high school days, you might have seen that we have a point mass M and this is. They call that it is rotating with Omega. Isn't it? Am I speaking right or wrong? Yes, sir. They call M is moving with they Omega. call that it is moving with that. It is uh, rotating with uh, uh, about this center, say center. Oh, it is rotating with Omega. What is the velocity? For example, at any time, this is R. So what is the velocity? So we say that the velocity is nothing but Omega cross R. But I am saying that Omega is only defined for rigid, uh, rigid extended bodies. So how they are saying that uh, this point mass is uh, moving with angular velocity Omega? No, it is wrong. Basically, what is going on in back of their minds? They are taking an extended body, extended rigid body whose one side is at origin and the other side of that rigid body is at uh, this point. And the whole this mass point. of that body is concentrated at this point. OK, now that imaginary body is rotating with Omega and you are just calculating the velocity of one of the points on that rigid body. Yes, and uh, basically you are calculating the velocity of this point. Let us call this as point P. So you are calculating velocity of P with respect to this O. So you are using the same equation, but back in your mind, you are actually saying that there is a rigid body. Uh, with the mass less mass less this rod. Our whole mass is concentrated at this point. OK, so in this way you are. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. If there is a if there is a uh, point, mass. Point, point mass, it doesn't have any angular velocity. OK, it can have it. So better to say that there is a mass point mass. It is circulating about this. Uh, oh, it is better uh, way of saying it. Uh, do not say that it is uh, rotating. Point mass can't rotate. Just say that it is circulating around this point. Oh, can you calculate the velocity? The, that is the better way. But to solve that thing, you can uh, you can consider imaginary extended body like this. How I have told you, you can consider an extended body like this, whose mass is considered at this point and which is hinged at this point. Then you can calculate the uh, velocity of this thing. This is like you you can do anything, but uh, don't change the nature of the problem. OK, so the nature of the problem is that this is a point mass and it is revolving around the around this center. And Hope that, this oh. answers and clears your doubt. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah, it clears. OK, so yes, shall we stop recording? Sir, yes, sir, you can stop. But... Started recording, sir. Stop recording.